All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today in person and via Zoom for our first of four um, part series um, for business success. I want to start by thanking everybody for coming. Um, we appreciate it. And also want to give a huge thanks to Delta Community Credit Union for making this all possible to be our sponsor. Um, don't forget that you can not only find this, but also all of our um, videos on our YouTube channel for the Chamber. And next, I'm going to turn it over to our speakers to introduce themselves. And y'all enjoy. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Harlan Hammock. I'm a business coach with IB4E Business Coaching, uh, coaching for uh, small businesses, helping them turn common sense into common practice by systematizing their business. Um, I'll be working on session three and four of this series uh, to talk to you about how to systematize your business, um, how to start creating a business that works for you rather than you working for the business. Patrick. Thanks, Harlan. Good morning, my name is Pat Finneran. I'm the, uh, the president of Accelerated Performance Solutions. It's a sole source consulting company. And uh, we have other colleagues that work with us from time to time. What we try to do is help business owners achieve their vision. And we do that first of all, by making sure we work with the business owner to build a solid foundation for their business. And, and then we look at the organizational alignment to make sure that alignment is in support of that foundation. And we work on operational excellence. Can you do the things that you say you, you can do very well and what systems and processes need to be tailored to do that? And finally, we focus on what I think is the most important part, which is putting your people first, making sure you delight your customers. And then from that, you're going to get what you really want, which is profitable growth. So I am gonna be uh, leading session two and participating with Harlan in session four. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is James Schramm. I am the vice president for business development for a company called AW Vanguard. Um, in essence, it's a financial consultancy that brings different tax strategies to small to medium sized businesses. Um, first, I want to thank Parker and Susan in the chamber for setting all this stuff up. We know, obviously, with COVID, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of, of turmoil and tri tri tribulations that a lot of business owners are going through, and so to be able to bring in the collective groups um, from experts from different areas of business to help try to provide some of these solutions, um, provide some advice, it's something that we that all three of us uh, truly look forward to being able to do. Um, I'll tell you, we're going to talk a little bit today. I'm going to throw some numbers out at you about finance and talk to you about some of the things. Um, that you guys may or may not be experiencing that you may or may not be aware of. So I like to look at this as a truly interactive um, experience, if you will. And so as we kind of go through here, feel free. If you're on Zoom, um, if you want a question as we're going, feel free to throw a question out in the chat. Parker will go ahead and read the question off to us and we can get that answered. Uh, for the folks that are here in attendance live, by all means, um, a simple hand gesture and stuff like that, ask the questions because no, nothing's off base. Um, but with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so we've got that up. They're coming right now. All right, all right, so we should be good to go with the screen sharing and everything. Um, some of the things that we're gonna talk about is the, the title screen right there, you see proactive versus reactive. The easiest way that I can describe this to you, and it's funny about when it comes to taxes, um, it's it's a subject that nobody really likes to talk about. It's an ugly word. Um, there's the old adage that the only two guarantees in life are death and taxes. Um, I can tell you the death part is probably true, but taxes not necessarily. Um, so as we kind of go through here, just keep in the back of your mind what you feel the definition of proactive versus reactive is, and I'll share some of my thoughts with you um, with reference to, to that. Give me one second here. Our clicker is not working. Gotta love technical difficulties.
There we go. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, um, the company that, that I represent, I'm one of the founding members of, is called AW Vanguard. The, the gist of what AW Vanguard was is there were about a half a dozen former CFO and SVPs for Fortune 100 companies that about four or five years ago realized that when you start talking about small to medium sized businesses, um, they, they get left by the wayside when it comes to tax advice because simply put, they can't afford to pay for that level of, of strategic planning. And so with the help of a 5013C that we have uh, called Future Tax Leaders, um, we're able to, regardless of industry, bring to bear a level of tax advice and tax strategies that can be applied to any size business. And our primary focus is on small businesses. So we chalked it up to normally businesses with less than 100 employees. Um, and so as we go through here, kind of keep in mind that that's, that's where our focus is going to be. That's what it is that we're looking to do. Um, and, you know, co collective with, the, with just the founding members alone, um, we bring to bear about 300 years of professional finance and tax services. And the, the overall mantra or goal of what it is that we're looking to achieve is to be able to help empower business owners and decision makers. But the ultimate goal is to help them grow. So, so the idea of what it was is there's some glaring numbers I'm going to throw out to you. There's some stats I'm going to throw out to you. And I'll tell you that I'm a big data guy. I like numbers because numbers are really easy to read and they're irrefutable. So any number that I throw out to you today, I highly encourage you uh, write it down. You've got a list of, um, you got a list of the slides, Google it and fact check me. Um, it's, I, I know these numbers like the back of my hand because fact of the matter is, is that they, they're true and they happen year in and year out, unfortunately. But the entire genesis of why we became who we are right now is because of the fact that 93% of all businesses overpaid their taxes. And from a business perspective, when you're talking about taxes, don't get wrapped around just that corporate tax rate. I got 21% taxes and that's what we do. We're talking everything from sales tax, excise taxes, payroll taxes, social security taxes, property taxes, the list goes on and on and on. The one thing the U.S. government's good at is taxing. Um, so this, that 93% is all encompassing across the board. So knowing that 93% of all businesses overpay their taxes and knowing that the 7% do something different, in other words, again, reactive versus proactive, how can we help that 93% number shrink by bringing to bear some of these strategies? And so the, the overarching vision and mission of what we set out to do is to be able to educate decision makers, business owners, CFOs, SVPs, uh, whatever acronym you want to put behind the name, to, to be able to educate them with these different strategies and different approaches that they can take to help put themselves in a better advantageous position with reference to their tax burden and their overall financial health of the business. So let's just get into some of the numbers. And like I said, as we go through these, if you've got questions, by all means, pop in, um, but we'll kind of we'll kind of cruise through here. So the first one you see right there, 93%. That is, Forbes Magazine puts this out every year. Um, it's year in and year out, it's, it's where the average falls. I will tell you, every business owner, every C-suite executive, every CPA or accountant that I sit down with, they 100% believe that they live within that 7% that don't. And I'm here to tell you that 93% of them are wrong because the numbers just don't lie. So how do you, how do, how do you inflict the, the ability or the capability to help them understand that they're part of that 93% and that there's help out there that they can do this? When you think about accounting, big picture, as you get into this, everybody thinks about the big four. So KPMG, PricewaterhouseCooper, um, Ernest & Young, the list goes on and on. These guys, primarily hyper-focus themselves on Fortune 500 companies or greater. The reason that they do that is because they know that these companies are going to be able to pay for their services. And if you're going to bring in, if you're going to bring one of these big four companies in, I'll tell you right now, they're going to put about a $2,500 an hour price tag on you. And they're not even going to sit down and talk to you unless you're willing to sign up for 10 or 15 hours. Most small businesses can't afford this. Okay. And we understand that we recognize it, but with that in mind, you still have to be able to deliver that same level of, of strategy and advice to, to, these, to these business owners 
but you have to do it in a, in a way that, that's most advantageous for them. And so we've came up with a couple of solutions on how we're able to do that and be able to help folks. And I'll share that with you here in a second now. But the second number that you see right there, 480 billion. Last year, Fortune 100 companies, 60, of, well, first of all, all, all 100 did not have a single corporate tax dollar that they paid out. 63 of them, in fact, ended up getting a return collective uh, collective amount of about $480 billion. And everybody always gets upset with it when they think about, you know, how can General Electric have, make up the number, 10 billion in revenue and they didn't pay any corporate taxes. Well, they did it because they had a proactive approach to their tax strategy. So when you sit down in October and November, or better question is, are you sitting down in October and November to speak with your accountant or your CPA or your CFO about your budgeting for the next year? If you're not having that conversation when you're planning next year's budget, you are going, you're taking a reactive approach to taxation and you're just going to get stuck with what you got stuck. Okay. Um, as you make your way through here, one of the things that really gets us excited about being able to, sorry about that. We had technical difficulty. One of the things that gets us excited about being able to, um, focus on the small businesses in the U.S. is that third number that you see there. Uh, DOL puts it out every year. About 80% of the U.S. economy is driven by small businesses and they, they, they classify that as businesses with less than 100 employees. So in essence, um, anybody who's in on this call, I guess to say that you probably fall within that guys and most, most of America does. There are 31 million small businesses in the U.S. as we stand here today. That number came out uh, beginning of the year. So 31 million businesses account for 80% of the U.S. economy. And those same businesses are able to, to generate on average of about a million and a half new jobs every year. And these numbers continue to drive back. You can go back and look at them over the last decade. They're plus or minus a percent or two. So that, that it's, it's a fantastic barometer. So I go back to my original statement and the original number that's on that slide. If 93% of the companies that make up 80% of the U.S. economy are responsible for 1.5 million new jobs. The question I ask is this, if you have, a, if you have the ability to affect, to say 10% of those businesses, 10%, what does the 1.5 million new jobs turn into? Is it 2 million, 2, 5? There's no way of knowing. But it's truly the reason why we're doing what we're doing. We're setting out to, to try to impart these changes for, for companies and provide again this level of strategic advice that you simply are not either having um, or haven't been exposed to. And it's just a matter of, well, there's a saying that I have, that, um, it's you don't know what you don't know. The hardest conversations that I have, it's not with the business owners, it's always with CPAs and accountants. That's the hardest because truth of the matter is when I sit down with a business owner, They'll tell me about their wife and their kids and their church and, and ball games and everything that's going on. As soon as the, the conversation of finance come up, it's the most intimate conversation that I can have with a business owner or a decision maker for any particular company. That that level of intimacy actually gets raised when you're sitting down with the accountant or the CPA of that firm, because there's not a single CPA that files taxes for a company or a client every year that doesn't think they're doing the most advantageous for that client. But the reality is that 93% of them aren't, otherwise we wouldn't be overpaying taxes. So when we set out to make these changes, do we wanna become the accountant for 31 million businesses? Absolutely not. It's not even in our charter to be able to do that, nor would we want to. What we wanna be able to do is one, get the ship right and pointed in the right direction. And two, educate either their existing team or make recommendations for possible new teams that they could bring in to continue taking care of this stuff. So how do we go about doing this? There's some different, uh, different ways and different approaches. Um, you see that there's several, several different areas within the, the scope of finance that's on there. I will tell you that 100% of my conversations that start with business owners or decision makers always revolves around tax optimization. Um, I'll tell you that as you get into, as you get into it, you would be amazed when you start looking at the numbers and you quickly realize that these 93% of the businesses that are overpaying, it's simply because that reactive tax strategy that they're employing 
is doing so using boilerplate answers. And I can, a great example that I can give you is that if we go over to Noonan Square and we were to, we, if we have three coffee companies in Noonan Square and all three are next door to each other, they all had a million in revenue last year. I'll tell you that all three of them are gonna have it, uh, completely and totally different financial picture, completely no different approach to taxation, strategies, how they're gonna go about it. Because when you get down to proactively in, in interacting or engaging in a, a, that level of tax strategy that's gonna be most advantageous, it has to be done specifically for your company based on real-time data, real-time statistics, and real-time laws that are happening. Um, I'll tell you as a business owner, and it's and I never take shots at bows across or across the bow, I should say, with accountants or with, with, with CPAs, but I will tell you that if you go back to last year and you go back to last April, for all of you business owners that applied for and received or applied for and didn't receive the original stimulus, what we call PPPL 1.0. Um, if you did not have and change your tax strategy after that, you're you're already behind the power curve. You're, you're, you're reacting to what's coming in front of you instead of proactively taking charge and taking a hold of your business. And I will tell you that taxes can close your doors very quickly because if there's one thing the government's good at, it's getting their money. So you have to figure out ways to not let them do it. And it's something that we're very good at being able to do. Taxes is the, the, the genesis of the conversation that we have. But one of the other things that we'll do is that we actually will sit down with you and look and take a look at these different areas as far as doing an actual financial analysis on your, on your books and, and where your company currently sits. Um, we offer fractional CFO services, and we can talk more about that offline for anybody who's interested. Um, it's it's a it's a whole different kind of it's a whole different service line for what you're doing. Sometimes it's advantageous. I would say, to be quite honest with you, if you've got 30 or more employees, it's probably something you want to talk about because you're going to be in a different revenue uh, you're going to be in a different revenue bracket, if you will. And there's things that that level of service can bring that that can move move needles for you. Um, and obviously we look at bookkeeping, you know, just general accounting practices. Um, and the, the last thing that you guys see up on the business optimization kind of goes without saying is it's kind of a catch all for these different areas and stuff. Cause I will tell you that every time we sit down and we look at a set of books, when we're just looking at taxes, the chances of me finding a, a, a abhorrent tax foundation or tax burden and finding everything else is beautiful. It, it's never happened. So usually if one thing's, one thing's um, being shorted, everything else is being shorted. So everything can be looked at and done. We actually have a forensic tax team that are able to take those books for you and they'll sit down. It takes them about 45 minutes and they will do a deep dive into what it is that you specifically have going on and make a recommendation, um, with, like I said, with, within an hour. So it's it's something that we that we enjoy doing. It's, and like I said, it's, it, it makes a difference in some of the things that we're able to bring to bear for companies that have really this last year truly struggled. So these are some of the examples of what we've done thus far. The, the, the actual consultancy, we didn't launch until the middle of the summer of 2020, and we did it as a reaction to COVID because there was for the six of us, we could not in good conscience sit by and keep watching business after business close its door on something that was completely and totally um, not their fault, knowing that there are tens of thousands of dollars that are sitting in coffers that shouldn't be there and that could be easily recovered. And I, I can tell you, you can see the numbers up on the board for yourself thus far. In, you know, we've recovered over $200 million in either recovered taxes or taxes saved simply by changing their strategies and changing their books. We take a look at that. We'll go back three years and see what these things are. But the overarching, the overarching theme for what it is that we're looking to do with reference to these seminars here within Noonan and the Great Aquita County, um, it's not to, it, it, it's not a, a, an advert for what it is that my company happens to be doing. It's more of an advert of trying to bring awareness to a significant problem within the business world. And that is simply that you're overpaying your taxes and I can't beat it up enough. Um, one of the questions that I get asked, I, I made mention before that the, the conversation with CPAs is very delicate because at the end, 
that 93%, we're essentially telling their accounting team, you're not doing this right. And it's not intentional, but I will tell you, um, I tell business owners and I tell the accountants and everything else that they simply don't know what they don't know. And I use this analogy a lot and it usually, when I do, it usually makes people smile, but it really hits at home. And that is that CPAs are a lot like doctors in the fact that all doctors have MD behind their name, but you don't go to a foot doctor if you need a cardiologist. So in other words, when you look at what it is that you're in, you know, the tax advice or the tax strategies or what that optimization could look like for say a coffee company or a manufacturing facility or a small boutique retail shop, they're all vastly different. So, so when you sit down with a, with your accounting team, you want, you want, you want to take the advice from somebody who's been in that particular vertical for, for X number of years. I made mention to earlier about our, we have a not-for-profit, it's called tax or future tax leaders. The, it, the, it's been around for about 20 years and essentially it's a who's who of CPAs and finance professionals in the world. We've got about 20,000 members that belong to that. And its sole function in life is to provide not only networking opportunities, but more importantly, educational opportunities for finance and for, and for tax professionals, because truth be told, they simply don't exist. There are a few organizations like us that are out there that, that gear towards these future tax leaders. But the example that I give, and hopefully it's something that's very easy and should be clear when you hear it, is you've got a kid who graduates college, he takes a CPA exam, becomes CPA, goes to work for KPMG, and they put him on dog food, okay? Most accountants will go to work for a firm for about four or five years, and then everybody wants to be their own boss, they branch out on their own. When he leaves the big, the big firm to start up his own, his own uh, shop, he is an expert in dog food taxation. He is an expert in the tax laws that apply to dog food. But now he's taking on clients again that are manufacturing, that are retail, coffee shops, food and beverage. The, the list goes on and on. And I give the examples when, you know, it. There, <laughs> so when COVID hit, using California as an example, because every state has some unique laws. In California, let's just say you're, let's say you're a coffee shop and you've got customers that come in and you charge them five bucks for their coffee and it's a, well, it's California, so it'll probably be a $400 tax, but it's, you know, a dollar tax on your coffee, right? California has a law that says that you're not allowed to charge sales tax for anything is to go. Well, all of a sudden, all these restaurants and all of these, all these coffee shops and, and everybody who fell in, you know, fast casual dining or quick service restaurants, they continue to charge and pay city, state, county tax, sales tax on things that they didn't have to. Case in point, you can see there a cash tax benefit for one of our single clients, substantial client. Um, we recovered over $100 million in sales tax that they had paid. They didn't have to pay, okay? So there, there's unique, very specific, dynamic things that affect your business from a taxation perspective that if you don't have that level of expertise to be able to truly put into place for your business, then that's where I use the term reactive versus proactive. And chances are the 93% are getting boilerplate approaches towards taxation. And it doesn't have to be that way. I will tell you, there's, there's 9,834 tax codes in the US tax code that, that apply to business. And there isn't any one person on the planet that knows all of the laws and all of the deductions and all of the loopholes that exist in almost 9,900 different sections of the tax code. So what is it you need? You need somebody who has experience that's in that business. So this is where for us, you know, we don't have like the collective six, we don't have that level of expertise in these different industries, but we have the 27 Yankees on the bench because we have 20,000 members who are in every industry on the planet. Case in point, Tim Zhu, he's the CFO for the Boston Red Sox. Um, we had our annual meeting here last summer uh, or last fall, I guess it would be now. Um, and we were on a call a couple of weeks ago because we were talking with a minor league team down in San Diego that was looking to try to get some advice. So who did we call? We called the CFO for the Boston Red Sox and said, hey, can you do me a favor, have a conversation with the guy and see if you see something that we don't. This is what we do. Now, are you going to get the Boston Red Sox every time? Of course not. But you're going to get guys that have got or girls that have got 20, 30 years of experience in all these different verticals that existed 
Fortune 100, 200, 500 companies. And we're able to put all of that together to bring that level of education and advice to you as a business owner, and more importantly, to all of the CPA and accounting folks that it is that you're going to continue to work with. I will tell you that the biggest, um, our biggest opponent and the biggest hurdle that we have in these conversations are with CPAs and accountants. And by the time we're done, after about an hour conversation, they are our biggest advocates because at the end of the day, they, they want to be the best for you. There is with, it goes without saying itself. So we're able to show them how they can do that. And we can help teach them how it is that they do that. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we talked about thus far? I know it's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of, um, it's every, every situation is extremely unique to each particular company. And I've got one more section that I'm going to talk about. It's not on the screen here, but hopefully it will be extremely relevant and timely to what it is that's going on. But up until this point, if anybody on Zoom's got a question, you can send it in on chat. I was wondering, um, how often do you come across the structuring of real estate? I'm a real estate consultant, commercial real estate consultant. How often is that kind of their their need to save on taxes is to restructure the way they make, you know, they hold their real estate or or make the real estate decisions? Is that pretty uh, common? Or so the question for everybody on Zoom, the question revolved around real estate, in this case, commercial real estate and, and taxation. Here's what I'll tell you is this is relevant towards any business in any industry that pays taxes. OK, so with that in mind, the answer is we come across it as soon as we come across it. So for us to sit down one on one, it would probably take about 15 to 20 minutes to ask a few pertinent questions. and. When, when I made mention that we do, so my company will actually sit down and do a free tax analysis for any company that approaches us. If you had 200,000 in revenue last year, or you had 200 million in revenue last year and stuff, we want to talk to you. It, it's that simple. Um, our, our primary focus is to be honest with you, where our numbers fall, companies with less than hundred employees, companies with under 50 million in revenue. Only reason being is because when you get above those numbers, you're getting into an area and a level where you're probably getting sound advice. And more than likely, you're in the 7%. You're not in that 93%. So the answer to the question is, is we come across it as soon as we come across it. Um, I, you know, whether it's coffee companies, it's boutiques, um, retail shops, manufacturing facility, you name it, the, the list goes on and on. Um, with reference to what you're talking about, there's specific questions that I will bring an expert in to ask I mean, there's some boilerplate questions that i can ask you to get a pretty good idea where you're sitting um, but as far as the actual analysis so, so the team that we bring in okay so in your case real estate and so i'm going to bring in it'll probably be like it'll be two two fairly well seasoned accountants and an expert that happens to fall within probably commercial residential real estate whether it's offices or however, however it falls down and so so these guys, when it comes to a forensic examination of what your, just your taxes look like, I kind of akin it to an oncologist in the fact that, you know, when oncologists get your blood work back, there are key markers that they immediately go to. It's, it's the flags that are tried and true, um, regardless of the type of cancer you happen to have. It's things that they're looking for. Taxes are no different. They are going to take that, that same level and go straight to those spots and look, okay? And it takes them, like I said, 45 minutes to an hour. And in addition to that, what's going to come out of that is that we're going to, number one, we're going to find out, are you in the 93%? Number two, we're going to have an initial number of exactly what it is that you've overpaid that could be, that one that you've overpaid and two that could actually be recovered and or saved because if you hadn't filed yet, you can always make those changes. So, so we're going to have that, what that initial number looks like. But more importantly, we're going to have a very good indication of where the holes in the dams are, because we could sit down and do a tax recovery. That 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 goes without saying. That takes a team, you know. It, it, we, we got the numbers. We file the paperwork for. We do all that stuff for you to get it all taken care of, and then just money just shows up to your bottom line, right? We can do that, but that doesn't address the why. So it doesn't make us. It doesn't make any sense to do a tax recovery or a tax savings or an optimization if we're not fixing these other holes. So that last part of that that we're going to know is. 
Uh, what was your name? What was your name? Patrick. Patrick. So we're going to know, Patrick, number one, we're going to know why you fell into this particular area as far as the overpayments go um, or and or where the savings were more optimized. We're going to be able to make the recommendations that you're going to want to put into place, again, using the analogy to plug the holes in the dam. And then thirdly, part of that optimization is going to be able to provide um, to be able to provide you a structure or provide you a, a level of advice that says you, it's more advantageous for you to configure yourself or reconfigure yourself in this manner. And I, I, I say this like this, okay? So when we think about businesses and you think about just the structure, right? Because we're talking about taxes, so, but just the structure of a business, that sole proprietorships, LLCs, S Corps, C Corps, there's a few other ones, but this is this is gonna cover the major gamut. There are, there are from a tax perspective, there are advantageous, uh, there's capabilities that you're able to leverage what's most gonna be most advantageous for your business uh, as an LLC that an S Corp can't do. There's things that S Corps that can't do that LLCs can do and vice versa. There's gonna be things that a C Corp can do that an S Corp can't, but it might not be advantageous. So we're gonna be able to look at all that and go, we realize you've been running as an LLC, you've been paying yourself, it's 1099, we get that. We see it a lot. Truth of the matter is that we want to switch you up. We want to make you an escort, make you a W-2 employee. You're going to pay yourself a bi-weekly check, take quarterly bonuses and everything else, and use your company as a pass-through. And this is just general terms of by and large. Instead of paying taxes twice, you're going to pay them once. So your personal tax may go up slightly, but your corporate tax is going to diminish greatly. Um, so these are this this is all part of what that look looks like. And then it's a really easy question. Do you want to do it? I've yet to have a business owner sit down and say, I'd rather let Uncle Sam keep the money. And no, I'd rather just keep performing as inefficiently as possible. Um, if I run into him, I guess we'll help meet him someday. But um, so with, with reference to what you're saying, it, it's it, we, we see it when we see it. And there is not an industry that we don't touch. Is there anybody on Zoom? Uh, we do not have any questions on Zoom. We do not. Okay. Do you guys have any questions that you wanted to, to ask or make mention of? I was just going to say, not to throw you on the spot, but it just, it, it's a, just to be interactive. Yeah. Go through the process again, how you would help a company that comes to you. Sure. So the, the easiest way I can describe the process in the simplest terms is uh, we're going to get out of this meeting and Patrick's going to say, can I get on your books and sit down? We're going to talk for about 15 minutes. Um, and then I'm going to set up calendars to put you on the books with an expert. It might be a five or 10 minute call because being in commercial real estate, there may be some specific uh, there may be some specific paperwork that we're going to want to take a look at, but by and large, what we're going to want to see, we're going to want to see your books. We're going to want to see your last three years of taxes. And so we have, we, we, we have NDAs that we put in place to protect you, protect us, all that stuff. We've got secure portals to be able to transfer paperwork over. It's not, it's not difficult to do at all. We get that knocked out. Usually within about 48 hours of us receiving the stuff, I'll have an answer for you and know exactly where it is that you're sitting and what you could be looking at. Um, so, we do provide other, we do provide ongoing support and ongoing service lines. We do have relationships and we have service capabilities for, for tax optimizations. Like I said, fractional CFO services. And I didn't touch on this, um, but I, I guess maybe this is a good spot to touch on it a little bit. So fractional CFO services, if, if your business, let's say you're on the cusp of, of growth, okay? What hurts potential growth? Fractional CFO services, what it allows you to be able to do, it allows you to be able to, to receive and take advantage of that CFO level experience, advice, guidance, and leadership in a way that you don't have to take that W-2 hit on your overhead. So in other words, if you're going to go out and get a CFO, you're probably going to pay him a buck and a half a year plus a comp plan, plus bonuses, and he's probably going to have something on the back end as well. Most small businesses are not going to be able to afford that. You've got 30 employees, 40 employees. You can't afford to have something like that. But it doesn't mean that you can't afford to have that level of service. Because truth be told, when you look at CFOs, they sit in on weekly meetings and they pretty much react and make adjustments on a monthly and quarterly basis. So if you're kind of on that cusp, perhaps you ask yourself, does it make more sense to have that level of expertise when knowing all the work's being done by lower level accountants and lower level managers, does it make more sense to have that level of, of leadership available to us on a once a month, twice a quarter basis? Or does it make more sense to go the full money and know that we're going to hang a $350,000 tag 
uh, to our W-2 payroll. Um, so there's so there's different ways you can go about that. But I'll tell you that if if, if you're in that if you're in that area if you're in that area of growth where you're looking to take that next step, fractional CFO services can be worth its weight in gold because they're going to be able to not just take care of the finance side of the house. Because remember, <laughs> if you find a CFO that enjoys taxes, you found a unicorn. I guarantee you, you talk to 100 CFOs and 100 of them are going to tell you, I, I don't do taxes. We do balance sheets and P&L statements and probably we do all this other stuff. We take we take the financial operations and that's what we are very, very good at doing. But every single one of them has an accountant that's on staff because they hate taxes. So in understanding all that, where it is that they're coming in, if you know that they're not going to be engaged 60 hours a week for 50 weeks a year, why not have the same level of service fractionally or ad hoc or on call or on a retainer that you can pull in for quarterly meetings, we're doing adjustments, we're getting ready to file, hey, this just happened. You know, I mean, case in point, if you were a fractional CFO in January of 2020, your life changed in March of 2020. But majority of the companies didn't. That's the problem. So when, when you sit down and you, and you look at all of that, stuff for us again 15 minute 20 minute call talk about it you're going to send the paperwork over we're going to get it team's going to take a look at it um like i said 24 48 hours give or take just depends on on how it's fallen in um, and then i'm going to be able to call you there a day or two after i've, I've had a chance to talk to them and give you a an overview of the analysis and this is the results that we found um, i'm just going to make up numbers the there's seventy five thousand in overpaid taxes over the last three years that we can get back twenty two thousand that we can save by changing a couple of your things that you've got that are in there. Um, you've got problems in payroll taxes and the way that you're using it. Um, you're not taking any advantage of R&D credits whatsoever and your accelerated depreciation is not existent. So wrap a bow around all of that, whatever that number happens to be, we throw a hundred grand at it or whatever. And then we simply say, do you wanna proceed forward? You wanna do this and we can get this fixed. And there's different ways that we can go about doing it. So that's what a stereotypical initial deal looks like um, or an initial um, what that initial relationship looks like and then what happens from there is it, one thing guarantee with Washington whatever happened yesterday is going to change tomorrow so I guarantee with the IRS it's going to be the same thing and we're, I'm about to talk about a couple of things specifically that's going on right now that every single business owner needs if you got nothing out of this you need to be, make sure that you write the next two things down that I talk about because without question it has absolute consequences on your business as you sit here today um, but that's what a stereotypical stereotypical relationship will look like. And then it just continues to grow from there to where you can use our services um, and use that advice to either help educate new folks that you bring on board, bring them up to speed. Um, we have a lot of situations and a lot of examples where um, Patrick's company, we, we came in, we did some fixes and everything else. He's been with the same accountant for 10 years after about six months. And we got his accountant up to speed, but after about six months, um, it just didn't seem like the relationship was the same. He decided to go another way. And so he brought in, uh, he brought in ABC accounting. Okay. So now ABC accounting will sit down with that team and brief them and bring them up to speed on your business, help them understand what it is that you're doing from that strategic level to continue to maintain a proactive approach to your tax strategies and to the tax foundation of your company. Because I'll tell you, if taxes and finances aren't squared up, your business is not going to be open for very long. Case in point. Any other questions anywhere? No? Patrick, did you have anything else? No. Okay. So the last thing that I want to talk about before we move on, um, it is, it's, it's the most popular word in finance in the U.S. right now within business, and that's stimulus. You guys know the CARES Act came out in March of 2020, so you'll hear me refer to PPPL1, PPPL2. PPPL1 was the original Paycheck Protection Plan. It was a loan that companies were able to apply for through SBA approved banks and get loans to help try to keep the ship afloat, not necessarily doors open, but to keep employees paid and off of being on unemployment, okay? It was a very successful program for many businesses uh, I think it was too successful for some businesses, in my opinion, but we can talk about that over a beer sometime. Um, but the one thing I can tell you that it absolutely failed at was the ability to truly advise business owners or decision makers on exactly what 
PPPL was, what it entailed, what forgiveness looked like, and more importantly, the, the, in my opinion, the real, the real failure fell upon everybody got hung up on just that word and didn't truly understand the entire scope of what the CARES Act completely included as reference to business owners and taxes and, and so on and so forth. So that's done. Fast forward to right the first of the year. So stimulus two come out, right? 1.9 billion, excuse me, 1.9 trillion dollars was released and is available. The first four days that the markets were open for that money, four days, $5 billion changed hands overnight. So if you're a business owner, if you're a decision maker and you're listening to this right now, if you have not applied, I don't care if you got, I don't care whether you were approved or declined for the first, I don't care if you were approved and they turned down your forgiveness for the first, it makes absolutely no difference. If you have not applied, first and foremost for PPPL, you need to do it tomorrow. You need to absolutely get on the phone with your bank, with your lending institution, do it tomorrow. If you don't have a lending institution, you don't have a bank, you don't have a portal in order to use, my information is in here. You call me, we'll put you in touch with somebody that day in order to get the process started because it is that adamant. I can tell you that the money is not finite. There may be another stimulus bill that shows up down the road, um, maybe three or four months. I pray that it doesn't because we're not doing a very good job with the first two, but your specific situation and everything else, you absolutely need to apply for it. Hands down, if they tell you no, do not take no for an answer without an answer of why. It is important and vital that you ask why. I can tell you that a majority of the PPL loans that were turned down were turned down because they had applied for an eight week, eight week payroll scale versus a 24 week payroll scale. Your choice to choose. And they should have been advised for 24 weeks. We don't tell a single client. You don't take anything less than 24 weeks. The reason being, I'm going to make up a number. You got a loan for $200,000. You've got uh, 10 people that are on the books, whatever it happens to be. And so if you chose eight weeks, you said by choosing eight weeks, you said that you were going to be able to expend 60% of that loan amount just in payroll and everything else. Because if you came up with 59% and you went past the eight weeks, your loan doesn't get forgiven. You've got to pay it back based at 2.1%, whatever it is. Um, had you chose 24 weeks, you could have peanut butter spread that entire amount over 24 weeks. It may have been giving, you know, Carla may have got a raise and everything else. But the bottom line is that you either pay everybody over that time period, make sure that, that 60% number gets hit, or you're going to be due that tax bill the next year. Okay, so you've got to do that straight away uh, without question. The next thing to write down is absolutely crucial. If you qualified for a PPPL one, you also qualify for something called the employee tax retention, or excuse me, employee retention tax credit, ERTC. There are very specific guidelines. There's very specific qualifications that really, it gets down into quarterly revenue numbers based on the number of W-2 employees. And it's, 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 a, it's a quantum math thing that you don't need really need to concern yourself with the overarching question. Did I qualify for PPPL2? I did. You need to absolutely apply for it because I guarantee you're going to get it. And what that is, is as of right now, it is up to a $14,000 credit that is given to you upfront in cash for every W-2 employee that you had on the books for the quarters that they laid this out in coming off of 2019 into 2020. So if you're talking just, let's just say it's $20,000 or excuse me, $14,000. If, if you've got 10 employees, that's $140,000 that's going to show up in probably about 30 days. And this is a tax credit. It's not a loan. It's tax credit. So this is getting borrowed against all future stuff that you're doing. I don't want to like to use the word free money. It's about as close you're going to get. Okay. So ERTC. The other thing to keep in mind as you move forward here is you're sitting down with your accountants, your CPAs and everything else. And again, if you're not having these conversations, I don't fault CPAs, I don't fault accountants, because I go back to my old adage, you don't know what you don't know. But if you don't feel like you're getting the level of advice that you think you might be, or you want, if you just want reassurance that what you're being told is a fact, I can tell you that you can get a hold of, you, you can contact me and we'll get you on the phone within 24 hours with, with the experts and get a, a, a real quick, fast look and see what it is that we're looking at. It does require you to do a lot of, uh, 
a lot of revealing. We take care of the paperwork if we were to do it for you. We do the paperwork, but you're going to need to give us a tremendous ton of information and stuff. And you're going to be giving it to us in ways that you wouldn't normally. Uh, case in point, I'm going to, I would be looking for your 26 week payroll breakdown per employee. So if you have like 25 employees, you're probably talking to Excel spreadsheet, like 5,000 cells, but it has to come out that way because it's based on W2 employee wages for a particular quarter based on revenue. And again, it's quantum math that I don't even pretend to try to understand. Okay. So PPPL one, you have to apply for ERTC. You absolutely need to apply for After all that said and done, there are several more credits that are built into the stimulus that people have to understand. Um, there's R and D credits for young businesses. If you're, if your business is less than five years old, you actually are considered in the IRS's world as a startup, as a startup, you are afforded a tremendous amount of leeway towards what's classified as an R and D credit or research and development. Okay. It, the phone call, you attended the meeting, we drove in, this is, can all be credited and stuff. So these are all credits that we're able to, that you can go back and apply in order to, again, change that tax burden or change that tax foundation to help bring this up. Um, social security tax deferrals, grants for live venues. Okay. If you own a bar, if you own a music hall, if you own all these things, live, live venues that essentially they, they lost everything. That's hundred percent. They're shut down. And so there's actually, there are dozens of grants specifically designed for them that all came out of this last round uh, or the, this current round of the stimulus. Um, pay, paid sick leave. For, for, for you, you can, you can go in and get, take tax credits. And when you're talking about taking a tax credit, what we're talking about here, we're talking about putting real dollars right back in your pockets. You can defer 50% of your social security payroll taxes that you're paying right now. You can defer them and move that forward based on some of this criteria that's in there. You can get credits for people that are sick because of COVID. So there's a whole myriad of different, different credits, different programs that are out there that just don't get talked about because all everybody ever sees is PPPL. This is what they're sending me and you know, they're going to send me 600 bucks for my wife and kids or something. That's all they see when the, the fact of the matter is all the meat and potatoes is behind the scenes. And if you don't know about it, you, it's, you're missing the boat. And I can guarantee you the 7% are not missing the boat. I guarantee you every one of them are applying. I, without question, their stuff was already done waiting. And the second that they opened up, they, they submitted guaranteed. Any other questions? Anybody online? Patrick, anything? General? So um, I've got one more slide if we can jump back here real fast. And so for those that are online, I've got some contact information. Um, I don't give specific information for specific um, companies like what Patrick asked. I, the, the question would fall more to a generality based upon the simple fact is that there's no way to I'm not going to give you a boilerplate answer but I can give you a 30,000 foot view of what you can expect and then the devil will be in the details once we're able to sit down and so if you've got questions if you've got concerns if you're looking for some guidance um, even if it's just a, even if it's a fact check with what it is that you've got going on um, that last screen that's coming up right now that's my email address this is my personal cell phone. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will tell you that um, I work with companies and business owners all across the country. So I feel calls at all hours, even on the weekends. Um, don't take it personal. If you do call me at like 1030 at night on a Saturday and I don't answer, don't take it personal. Um, if it's an emergency, leave a voicemail and everything. I'll probably give you a call back. But um, like I said, I, I appreciate you guys giving us a chance to be able to talk and to kind of, for me to wrap all of this up, when, when my family and I, we moved here, um, well, it'd be, we've been, we've been here for a year this month, actually. Uh, it'll be a year tomorrow, as a matter of, or a year today, shit. Today's the, yeah, today's the day. Um, the, the beauty of this move for us when we came here was that I, I'm retired military. I spent almost 25 years in Special Operations Command um, eight different assignments, uh, you know, we moved all over the place. And the one thing that we were finally looking forward to being able to do was to figure out where uh, forever home was going to be. We left Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington, DC, um, last February. 
and we made noon in our own because we really liked the Atlanta area. It was always on the books for where we thought we may end up. Um, we didn't know about noon until we got here. And once we did, we absolutely fell in love with it. So when I approached the chamber, when, when we kicked off this summer and the conversations that I had, I, I wasn't looking to promote I wasn't looking to promote our business from an economic perspective. It wasn't a marketing ploy or anything else like that. The fact of the matter is, is I'm fortunate that I have, I have the access to and the capabilities of delivering a level of advice to business owners that live in my town, that I go to church with, that my kids play ball with, that, you know, that we see, I shop in your stores. So to be able to do a small part, and provide a portal or an opportunity for something like this to help businesses not only stay open, obviously through the COVID and through this this entire economic downturn, but to, to watch you grow. I mean, you grow, we all grow. It's, it's, it's fantastic for the community. So for me, obviously, you know, there's a financial piece that goes along with it. It's everybody's doing what they're doing for a specific reason, but there's a lot more personal reasons because this for me, pers this is the first time that we've actually put down roots that we know that this is going to be our forever home. This is where we're staying. So to be able to get involved, not only with this chamber, with these two gentlemen here, with what the powers that they're bringing. And I will tell you that if you think you got something out of this first seminar, you do not want to miss the next three, because this is going to be the full Monty on how you take your business completely and totally to the next level. Um, to be a part of that and be a part of a community, it's the first time I've ever felt that because Everywhere else we lived for the last quarter century, we the boxes stay packed because we renewed that we were just guests. And so this is now our home. And it, so there, I have a personal stake in this and it's something that I'm very passionate about. So um, if you run into me on the street, feel free to reach out. Um, I love to drink my coffee black. So I'll take a free cup of coffee, um, meet for a lunch, whatever the case is. Um, you know, just don't hesitate to reach out. I'm an over communicator. Obviously I do like the sound of my own voice when I start talking about things that I'm passionate about. If I don't like something. I don't like to talk about it, but if, if, if it's something I'm passionate about, I do. So um, with that, I do have one question okay. have from Sharon. Yep. Miss Sharon, go ahead and ask it. Or she said payroll tax credit get extended into 2021. Yes. Yes, it did. So, Here's what I can tell you is the easiest way from the 30,000 foot view, because the stimulus, again, let's call them 1.0, 2.0, the stimulus packages, the everything that was in the first round carried forward, most was robusted and things were added. So I can tell you if you qualified for the first round for PPPL and some of the other tax credits and some of the other stuff, I unless something significantly has changed in your business, which to be honest with you, I hope you don't qualify for anything because your business is booming. But if you're still in that same, if you pretty much just stayed level across the board and you're just surviving, <coughs> excuse me, then the answer is yes, it is there. A lot of the criteria still remains. Some of it's been relaxed. Um, some of the case in point, uh, the, the ERTC credit was 5,000. Um, based on quarter hours, you make your way up around and everything else for the first round, it's up to 14,000 now. So that's been extended. PPPL loan limits, it's up based on the two and a half months. Of, that's been robusted up to, so whatever you qualify before, assuming that you had the exact same number of employees, and let's just say you're just peanut butter spread, revenue kind of was stalled, stayed the same, you would anticipate a loan of a higher amount. So I will tell you with reference to the PPPL, I cannot beat it up enough. When you apply, you choose when it, it's going to ask you eight or 24 weeks. You always choose 24 weeks. Always, always, always choose 24 weeks. Okay. And if, if you're, I can tell you right now, if you qualify, if your PPPL is less than 150,000 that you received and, and this is the important part, and you ensured that you can provide the data to show that 60% of that was used towards payroll. It's, a, it's an automatic, it's an automatic forgiveness. And that same level is carried forward to the new stimulus package. So, but with reference to the paid sick and family leave credit, yes, and it's actually been robust. And she also wants to know, Ms. Sharon asked, is it still 80 hours per employee? The, I have to go back in and look at the specific numbers. It breaks it down. I actually have it. Um, 
I don't want to pull it up right now. I've, I've got a, we're talking 30,000 feet right now. I've got the 5,000 foot look at it and stuff. Um, I can tell you that they would not have reduced it. So any other questions at all? Perfect. Well, hey, I, like I said, I, I greatly appreciate being able to um, sit down with you guys and talk and, and share some information and stuff like that. Um, you've got my information that was there. If you didn't get a chance to write it down in, in the Zoom world, um, by all means, uh, reach out to the chamber. Parker's got my contact information as well um, as, well as Pat Harlan's. Um, and like I said, this, this has been fun for me because it's, it's things that you as business owners can do right now to impart change in your business in a positive way. Um, and so it, it, it's what, it's why I get up in the morning and do what, do what I do. But like I said, you absolutely do not want to miss the next three seminars because this is where the whole thing comes together for, for where it is that you're looking to do. And I highly encourage you, you, you have friends, you have family members that are business owners or decision makers within companies. I highly recommend that you get them on the calendar, get them registered for these upcoming events because we're, I mean, we're bringing to bear, uh, well, myself and Harlan are fairly young people. Pat's a little old, but I think we're bringing, I think with Harlan and I, I think we're bringing probably close to about 60 to 65 years worth of business experience. And then Pat rounds us off to an even 400. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, all joking aside, it, it, this, it, this is gold. It, if you're not taking advantage of this, um, you know, shame on you. If I find you, you're definitely going to buy me a cup of coffee. So uh, with that, Parker. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, James. We appreciate everything today. Um, I do want to give a thanks for Harlan and Pat for being here as well. And of course, give a thanks to Delta Community Credit Union for being our sponsor for today. Um, and do not forget about our next section, um, which will be on February 24th. And Mr. Pat Fennerin will be our key speaker and he'll be talking about business foundations. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.